Assalamu alaikum. Join us for the new series here at Sunnah Followers on the book called Termites by Sheikh Muhammad S. Adli, hosted and broken down by Layla Nasheba. Please join us every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, right here on Sunnah Followers. Uh, welcome to our Hadith uh, class series. And uh, tonight we'll be discussing two Hadiths from two different books. The first Hadith is from the book entitled, Not One of Us. Not One of Us. And the Hadiths that are put together in this book are hadiths that Sheikh Muhammad <coughs> Saeed Atli chose. Which serve as reminders. Things will end up falling in the category. Wait a minute, that connection is unstable. I know. Cat. Can y'all see me? Okay. These are things that if we do them, they can end up uh, uh, making us, they, they can compromise our Iman. It doesn't mean that if you do these actions, you're a non-believer. No, what it means is uh, these are actions that can compromise your Iman. And also the second Hadith will be from the book entitled Beware. And it's the same as this book, Whereas if you do these actions again, your Iman can be compromised. So let's take a look. Uh, at the two hadiths for tonight. Let me share my screen. Okay. And uh, the first book is Termites. I mean, I said not one of us. This is Termites, not one of, of us. And when the Sheikh Atli refers to uh, these actions as being like Termites, what he means is these are things, actions that can eat away at your faith. These are things that we do and are not aware of how great an impact they are because they can eat away at our faith. And just like a termite uh, can eat away at the foundation of your heart, I mean, your house and cause it to fall in, the same thing with our iman. We have to keep our iman nourished and cared for properly to make sure that we're not doing actions that can eat away at it. So let's take a look at the hadith for tonight. And this hadith goes hand in hand with what we spoke about uh, earlier today. It's addressing the Qadr or the decree of Allah. This hadith is narrated by Ibn Ad-Daylami. He said he approached Ubay Ibn Qal and he said to him, I am a little bit confused about the decree of Allah. So tell me something that may cause the doubt to be removed from my heart about it. And this is something that a lot of us as Muslims struggle with. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in an authentic hadith that every nation has its fire worshipers. And the fire worshipers of this nation are those people who deny the Qadr of Allah. This is something that was very difficult for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to get the Muslims to understand that everything that happens was already written to happen. Just like a lot of you, a lot of you struggle with this hadith. You'll say, oh, well, since it's already determined who's going to be in paradise and since it's already determined who's going to be in hell, what's the use? What's the use? Because Allah already made me to go to hell. No, first of all, Allah didn't make that. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's take a look at this hadith. So this companion asked Ubay, he said, I'm confused. I can't, I don't understand 
how the decree of Allah works. So tell me something that can cause me to not doubt it, not question it. And Ubay told him, he said, well, if Allah punishes the people of his heavens and the people of the earth, he would not be unjust in doing so. And if Allah shows mercy to the people of the heavens and the people of earth, his mercy will be greater than any bad deeds that they could have done to bring about his punishment. He said, if you were to spend money to equal the size of the mountain of Uhud in the way of Allah, Allah would not accept it from you until you believe in his decree and realize that whatever affects you would not have missed you and whatever misses you would not have happened to you. And if you died, on a belief system other than Islam, you will enter hellfire. So when he told Ibn Adelami this, he said he then went to Ibn Masood and asked Ibn Masood the same question. And Ibn Masood gave him the same answer. And then he went to Ibn El Yaman and, and, and also he went to Zaid Ibn Thabit and they too told him the same thing you know, to try to help help him to understand the Qatar of Allah. And again, a lot of us struggle with this, struggle with this. We have to understand guys, even if you don't, even if it's beyond your ability to comprehend something, we still have to accept it. Whether we understand why or not, to deny any, of the articles of faith takes you out of Islam. So just because you don't understand how the Carter of Allah works, you can't say that you don't believe in it. If you say you don't believe in it, that means you're not a believer. You're not a Muslim until you believe everything that Allah has commanded us to believe. And again, th that humans struggle with. A lot of most people think that they can change their destiny. You cannot change your destiny. You cannot change the stars. You know, this is something that the Vikings used to believe. They could change the stars. No, it's already written. As I told you guys, when I did the series on the prophets of Allah, I did the story of Adam, alayhi salam. And the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa salam, told us that when Allah created Adam, after Allah breathe the soul into Adam. What's the first thing Allah did after that? He ran his hand, his right hand across the back of Adam. And he said, and when after he ran his hand across the back of Adam, all oh, a bunch of souls appeared. Adam said, what is this? And Allah said, these are the souls of your offspring who will be of paradise. And then Allah ran his left hand across the back of Adam and more souls appear. And Adam said, oh Allah, what's that? He said, these are the souls of your descendants that are destined to hell. When Allah did that, Allah didn't create those souls and say, I'm creating you for hell. I'm creating you for paradise. It's just that after creating the souls, by Allah having knowledge of everything, he already knew that these humans on the right when I take these souls and put them in bodies, these people will end up doing the deeds that are pleasing to me. So I have already chosen to forgive them and allow them in the paradise. And when he created the souls on the left hand side, he already knew due to his super knowledge that those souls, when he puts them in bodies, 
they will grow up and do the opposite of what Allah commanded. So he'd already decided at that point that they will be in hell. But the catch is Allah didn't choose that. He didn't choose that that person's going to paradise. He didn't choose that that person's going to hell. That person made their own choice because Allah, when he created the souls, he gave the souls something because after he created the souls of all mankind that will ever exist, that's when Allah went to the rest of his creation. He said to the sun after he created it, he said to the mountains, to the moon, I will give you free will. Do you want it? The sun, the moon, the mountains, the earth, they refused it. And then when Allah created the animals and the birds, the bees, their souls, because those creatures have souls too. When he created the souls of all those insects, uh, animals. He asked them, do y'all want me to give you free will? They denied it. But when he created the jinn, the jinn accepted it. And man, when after Allah created the souls of all the humans that will ever live from now to the end of time, he offered them the same thing. Do you want free will? The humans took it on. Because man, the souls of humans, we're ignorant by nature. Those animals knew what they were taking on. They knew that they would have been taking on the ability to make their own choices. And with the ability to make your own choice comes the consequence of hell. But man is arrogant. Man wants to be superior. So those souls that Allah created after he breathed the soul of Adam and him, they agreed to free choice. After they made the choice of free choice, Allah then knew what each and every one of those souls would do when he put them in a body. He knew every decision each one of those souls would make every action that each one of those souls would do. He knew who would mess up and who would repent. And he said, I'll forgive the one who's sincere and repents. And he knew which ones would mess up and not repent. And they're the ones that's gonna be in the hell fire. He knew which one of those souls would submit to him and be Muslim. So he already had decreed that person to be a paradise. And he knew which of those souls would not submit to him and would follow shaitan. So he decreed that they will be in hell. So that's what it means. Allah didn't make that choice. We made it for ourselves. It's just that he knew. He knew before he even put your soul or my soul in our body, he knew what our choices would be. So we don't blame it on a law. On the day of judgment, when we all as humans and jinn have to stand and be judged, no human or jinn will be able to blame shaitan for the choices they made. Shaitan's gonna tell you, all I could do was whisper, you chose to follow me. Nor can we blame a law. We can't look and say, Allah, it's your fault that I did what the things I did because you decreed it. Allah will instead look at us and say, no, 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 no. I decreed that the, that the result of your choices is hell or the result of your choices is paradise. I didn't make the choice. All I did is create the circumstances, because I'm the creator. I created the circumstances. I created the scenario. But you chose to take whatever direction you took in life. And I knew that you was going to take it. So I wrote in my book, after I created your soul, I wrote in my book that you're going to hell. 
because I'm a law and I knew even before you did it. But don't blame me. Allah will say, blame yourself. Y'all get that? That's the way destiny works. So it's already written. The book is sealed. When after Allah ran his hand across the back of Adam and released all and created all those souls, Allah knew each and every one of those souls, what they would be named, how they will live their life, the choices they make. And so he had to pen right when that one, that soul, that soul be in heaven, that soul in hell. But we can't blame it on him. Blame yourself. Everybody got it? That's the cotter of Allah. So let's look at this hadith more. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there are three types of people whom Allah will not accept from on the day of judgment. He will not accept their voluntary deeds, nor will he accept their optional deeds. And one of those people is a person who is undutiful to his parents. And another one is a person who denies the cotter of Allah. So the way I explain, this is how the cotter of Allah works. We have to accept that. Allah is the creator. He creates good and he creates evil. Everything comes from him. He sets the environment. He creates the scenarios. He's the mastermind behind everything. But he doesn't make that choice for you. You make your own choices. Some of us will choose, alhamdulillah, to call upon Allah for help. And Allah loves that. He loves for us to find ourselves faced with his predicament. He loves for us to be in his, the predicament that he created. He loves for us to, to look at the predicament, feel helpless, and raise our hands and say, oh Allah, help me. That's when he will, inter will, will, will intervene. Do you guys understand? Allah is the creator. He create all the circumstances, the scenarios, the environment, and he puts you in it. And he waits to see what you're gonna do, although he already knew. He already knew what you're gonna do when he made that soul. But he, cause he saw it all play out then. He does that and he does not interfere with what your choice is. You make your own choice. The only time he'll interfere with your choice is if you say, Allah help me. That makes him, whew. And that's when he may interfere and help you. Other than that, you'd make your own. I hope I'm clear with this, okay? That's why I was telling the sister the other day, Allah commands us in the Quran. This is a command from him, an order. He says, call upon me when you need help. Ask me for help. He doesn't say, ask somebody else for help. Allah doesn't tell us in the Quran to go ask people to make dua for us. He, there's no verse where he says, go to the people and call upon the people for help. No, he says, call upon me. I am closer to you than your juggler vein. I already know what your choice is gonna be. But remember, pride is Allah's cloak. Arrogance is his garment. He loves for us to say, Allah, I need you. Okay? So make your own dua. Make your own supplication. That's what he waiting on. Well, he already knew if he was gonna do it or not. Okay? That's what, the, what determines where you are gonna be at. How, how often did you call upon a law in your life? How often did you turn to a law for guidance in your life? 
How often did you remember a law in your life? That determines whether you're going to be in paradise or hell. So I hope this is clear. So this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful hadith. Again, believing in predestiny. This is one of the pillars of faith to deny Allah's knowledge, to deny his writing, his book, to deny his manifestation will spoil all your good deeds. That means you'll end up that bankrupt man. And that's why the prophet said, if Allah punishes the, the people of paradise and the earth, he did it because they deserved it. If he shows mercy to them, then his mercy to them is greater than any deed that they did. If you spin in the way of Allah, even the amount of a mountain, Allah is not going to accept it from you until you believe in him and believe in everything he commanded us to believe in. And we have to understand that whatever is meant to be, you can't change it. And to die upon any belief other than this will make you bankrupt on that day. So I hope I explained this to you guys. You know, as a diet, I've been teaching on the internet since 1986. And this is one of the things I've had a hard time getting a lot of my students to comprehend. But I think that my students comprehend it now. Okay, so let's look at the next hadith. The next hadith is from the book, Beware. And again, these are also things that we should beware of because they too can destroy our faith our belief in Allah. And this hadith today speaks about beware of causing others to divorce. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no woman should ask for the divorce of another woman just so she can marry her man because you will have nothing but what Allah has written for you. In other words, say, for example, I wanted to marry somebody and I already know this brother got another wife. I can't tell him I want you to divorce her and then I'll marry you. I'll marry you if you divorce one of your wives. I'll marry you if you get rid of one of your wives. This is haram. We can't do that. See how Allah sets boundaries and Allah sets rules in place for our betterment. You know, any woman that asks a man to divorce his wife to marry her has the curse of Allah on her. What does that mean? That means your wedding ain't going to never work out. That marriage will never last. How many of you know women who have done that? I do. How many non-Muslim women have done it? And look where they end up in divorce court too. You know, so Allah uh, sanctions and, and unsanctions a lot of things. And this is one thing that we can't do. No woman should ask for the divorce of her sister just to take her place. But she should marry the man for she will have nothing but what Allah has written for her. So if you want to get married to that brother, polygamy is lawful. Polygamy is good and clean. Okay. Marry him. Don't tell him to divorce his wife so you can take her place. Just marry him because you ain't going to get but whatever is written for you to get anyway. This is another hadith um, hitting on the curb of law. So from this hadith, we learn that no one can stop goodness or evil from occurring to someone. If Allah has planned for me to be happy, there is nothing you can do to stop it. If Allah has come uh, uh, has decreed for me to be unhappy, there's nothing you can do to stop it because that's the cotter of Allah. It was already written. The book has been sealed. The ink dried. Again, when Allah created the soul, my soul, after he ran his hand across the back of Adam, my soul was created. And everything that my soul would do was already written down because Allah knew it. He knew that he would put me 
<clears throat> my soul in a female baby, a female bald head, red head baby named Layla. And he knew that Layla would choose to get married a couple times in her life. <clears throat> he knew that Layla would make the choices to not stay in those marriages. Okay. There's nothing I could have done to change that because Allah knew what my choice was before I knew, before I even existed, before he put me in that little bald head, red head baby's body. He knew what choices I would make in life, who I would marry, how long I'd be married, what else I'd do, this, that. He knew. So what's the point in me telling some man to divorce his wife so I can take her place? I may take her place, but I may not be happy. Because Allah knew I was going to tell her to him to do that. And Allah knew that that was something bad to do. Allah don't like ugly consequences. The choices we make bring about consequences. Think about that. Also, we learn that um, um, uh, no Muslim should seek to cause another to get divorced for no valid reason. A brother's married to a good sister. Ain't nothing wrong with them. Why are you going to try to have him divorce his wife for no reason just to, to, for one night with you? And again, everything was written over 50,000 years before Allah even created the heavens and the earth. Allah did this. Allah knew what would happen right after he ran, after he put that soul in Adam's body. Where are the souls? The souls are kept in a place up there in paradise known only by Allah. Only Allah knows how many souls he got in that place. He takes the soul and have it, have the angels blow that soul and the human and baby when that baby is a fetus in the mama's womb. Okay? So it's already written. It was written tons of years ago. Okay? All right. So I'm going to stop right here. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. A shadow on.